Yeah, that's a bit better, I think. No problem. So we're joined with a national player. We're joined with one of our own in Jamar Loza. Firstly, Jamar, how are you? How's the family doing? How are things in the UK? Yeah, all's was, all was good, man. Um, family's all right. Family's well. Can't complain. Um, yeah, I'm all good. Thanks. Great. Really good to, to hear from you, man. Firstly, you know, before we get into to everything, you know, to, I want you to tell the viewers, you know, where on the island you grew up. Um, did you go to primary mm -hmm. school, school in Jamaica? And, you know, how old were you when you left Jamaica for the UK? Um, I grew up in, um, I was born in um, Kingston. I grew up in Arnett Gardens. Um, I was there, I, I, to be honest, I can't remember much about from the time I was there um, to the time I left. But um, yeah, I left to go to the States when I was about six. Stayed to the States for for about six months before um, I then come to the UK. So yeah, that's, that's where I've been since. Do you remember at all playing football in Jamaica at all uh, on the side of the road with friends, with a neighbour? Do you remember playing football at all in Jamaica? Yeah, I, I remember um, playing with like, the little kids um, that I grew up with. We, we'd always be kicking ball barefoot in the dirt and, and stuff like that. I do I do have fond memories of that. That's obviously where, where it all started. So, yeah, no, that's, um, that's, a, that's a good memory. Okay, and coming into the UK now, new country, new culture, new everything. Um, was it only football growing up that you played, or you played other sports in in growing up in secondary school, primary school in the UK? Um, yeah, I tried to. I, I was a very sporty person, so I tried to play as much sports as possible. Um, I love them stuff like that. So, uh, I did play a lot of different sports. Um. And yeah, I think football was was the one that most of my friends played. So I kind of went gravitated to to football more than anything else because that's most of, most of my friends are playing that as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of kick started my career. Okay, and tell me about the journey. You know, in terms of football for you, how you ended up at Norwich. You know, when you moved to the UK, did you settle in London? Was it the Midlands? Where did you settle in the UK? Yeah, so I settled in London. Um, but Norwich, Norwich had a very um, wide range of scouts all over the the country. So they would send scouts to to, to London to watch different teams play, and um, they um, they luckily they picked me out in one of the games, and I, I went on a trial there, done really well, and yeah, they signed me from there. Yeah, and the experience that you had at Norwich, you know, going through the academy and eventually playing for the club in the Premier League, you know, tell me about that progression for you and, you know, the, the pride that you had playing in the Premier League as a teenager. Yeah, no, it was really good. Uh, the, the journey was mad because when, even when I signed for Norwich, it was, it was such a surprise and shock to me. Um, I never thought I was, I was that good. I never really rated myself as a youngster. There was always a lot of players better than me um, growing up. So even when I when I signed, I was quite surprised. And then just to see my progression, like I I, I think I developed um very quickly, um in terms of like getting up to speed with the other players, and um yeah, so that journey for me was 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 magical to be honest because, um I could see myself getting better every day. Obviously training every day, it's a new experience being away from my family. Um, moving to Norwich, um, with a with a whole new family. Um, obviously as a young as a young boy, it's it's, it's difficult at times, but I embraced it. Um, it was I I, I like the change. I embraced it, and yeah, like going and doing all that, then getting rewarded by playing with the first team in the Premier League. That's um, yeah, it was it was, it was magical. Okay, brilliant. And tell me about the experiences that you had on loan. You know, going to. Coventry, Leighton, Orient, Southend. When you went to League One, League Two clubs, did it feel different? Did that mentally toughen you up? Did that make you mentally stronger? Those experiences on loan, what were they like for you? Yeah, no, they were definitely, um, they were definitely good for my footballing experience. I, whenever I, it was strange because whenever I went on loan, I never done well. I think I done well in one of my loan spells, 
but all the rest of them are, I didn't really play up to my potential so that kind of um killed me but I, I, I think maybe because I was so used to the way Norwich played and then when I went on loan they played so different so it was hard for me to adapt because I was only going on loan for a short amount of time it was usually a month so to to get in you have to be um like hit the ground running um you have to like perform very quickly and it's obviously hard in them leagues there some good players down there as well do you know what I mean so um yeah I always struggled um but then when I'd come back to Norwich after my loans I'd go back with the 23s or the first team and I'd I'd be one of the best players so it was very strange for me and frustrating because I wanted to re replicate that good form that I had from at Norwich to these other teams as well, but I couldn't quite do it. I understand what you're saying. And tell me about that moment in 2014 when you knew that you were going to get a call up. Do you remember? Was it a phone call, an email from Mr. Simpson? Was it the coach himself, Schaefer? What was that moment like getting the call up for Jamaica? Yeah, I think um, a few months before, I'd heard talks and then, yeah, when, when I think it was Mr. Simpson that called me. Um, I know Mr. Simpson really well. He called me and told me the news. It was, I was so proud because obviously I was born in Jamaica. My family are Jamaican. Um, so I, I knew I'd, uh, me telling my mum and my dad, they'd be so proud and I, I couldn't wait to do that. So, yeah, no, it was definitely a special moment for me. Yeah, and, and you're making a debut against Egypt. You remember being in camp. What was the atmosphere like being in camp and, of course, making a debut at a place where you played on loan as well? You remember that that game against Egypt? Yeah, yeah no, definitely. That's that's probably that's probably one of my favourite games in my career, to be honest, if I'm if I'm being really honest, because that that game was that was um that game was so close to home, so Loads of my friends and my family, like they, they, my my parents rarely came to any of my games, and obviously they came to to that one as well as a lot of my friends, a lot of friends that I didn't even invite. They just everyone in London that was Jamaican just naturally came to that game because Jamaica never play in London. Do you know what I mean? So I saw so many people. People were were treating me like I was more solid. Do you know what I mean? So it was it was a nice feeling. Um, it was a nice feeling, um, and yeah, probably as I'd, I'd say, probably one of the most enjoyable games of my career to date. To be honest, um, definitely one that I, I always remember. Yeah, wonderful memories, and I'm sure another one that stays close to home for you is being on home soil and winning the Caribbean Cup, having a medal, and lifting a trophy for your country as well. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was definitely special. The um, it it took it got. It got um dampened a little bit because I didn't play um as much games as I wanted to because I I don't know if you remember I caught the chip chip V virus so I was really ill I was really really ill and I think I came back for the final but I was on the bench or something like that um but yeah no just to see the boys win it was obviously special like you know what I mean um I I didn't they hadn't won it before that in in a while so it was good to to um to to win that. Yeah, you know, when I speak to persons like Joby and, and so on, and um, the, if you remember, it was in Montego Bay and you saw yeah. the atmosphere, the fans, the noise, especially from the warm up, you know, how you like that atmosphere of the loud dancehall music playing and the fans and the, the atmosphere. What was that like for you? Yeah, no, it's brilliant, man. I love it. Like, the um, it's, it's, there's nothing like home. Like, it's so different to playing playing in the UK. And that like kind of party atmosphere. That's we we all love that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it was nice to be a part of that. It was um yeah, I kind of miss it to be fair. Sometimes that's what you want. Um so yeah, no, it was it was brilliant. Yeah, I understand. And for those, you know, Jamar, for those that are wondering as well, you know, what are you up to? Because as you know, it we're approaching 10 years since that moment as well. What has Jamar been up to? Where is he at right now? I know we've seen him quite briefly in the National League and so on and so forth. You know, where's the career taking you now? Which club are you at now? Yeah, last season I was at Barnet. They were in the National League. And um, literally just before the season started, I ruptured my groin. So I had to have operation. And I was out pretty much the whole season. I came back towards the end of last season. 
but I kind of rushed back and my groin wasn't feeling a hundred percent. Um, now I was signed for a team, um, two leagues below that, the national league called Leiston. They're um, they're closed, which is where I'm based, so um, I can be at home. Um, do you know what I mean? It's, I don't have to travel as far, so it's good for me. It works for me right now where I'm where I'm at in my career, and yeah, just looking to um, kick on with them. Hopefully, they're they they they're quite favorite to to get promoted. So hopefully, I can um, help them get a promotion. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that's been good. And I mean, right now you're you're 29. Would you say that you're approaching your your peak physically? Do you feel like you're getting back to your best post injury? How are you feeling physically? Yeah, now to be honest, now since the injury, um, I've worked really hard to build myself back up, and I feel like since my early Norwich days, I haven't felt as good as I feel now. Do you know what I mean, I think as you get older, you start to know your body better. Um, so I know what I need to do. I know where I need to work on, where I need to train. So I've been going really hard in the gym. I've been doing all my runs, all my sprints and stuff like that. So in terms of physical condition, I think this is probably one of the best I've felt. So pre-season, I've played three games. I've scored five goals. Um, so I've been I've been feeling very sharp. Um, so, you know, I just want to take that form into the season and, um, yeah, score as much goals as possible. All right, that's that sounds brilliant. And for you, Jamar, you know, whenever the reggae boys play, whenever the national team plays, do you, you know, stay up late at night to catch the games or watch the highlights the next day? Are you still involved in watching the team? Are you a fan from the sidelines? You know. Yeah, no. Sometimes I stay up. Um, depends if I've got a game myself the next day and stuff like that. Sometimes I catch the highlights. We'll see a lot of lot of boys that I still know still play for the. The national team so I do like follow it and follow their careers and stuff like that like Damien Lowe I've been with him since under 23s and stuff like that um Alvas um the goalkeeper um Blake so yeah now a lot of them and obviously the UK based boys as well so um it's good to see obviously they're doing really well now um it seems a lot more structured um the program seems a lot more professional and, and stuff like that so no it's good there's only one direction it looks like it's gonna go in yeah and when you look um jamar when you look around the person that were in the caribbean cup squad with you person like joby he does coaching and he also does punditry as well <laughs> um nosworthy you know a great player as, as, as you know retired now mariapa still playing to this day you know when you see these players that give you the motivation that yeah you know i can do what they have done you know for club and country one day Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think obviously playing with with these boys is, at the time was a a huge honor and inspiration for me. So I've always kind of taken that with me and 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 always believed, yeah, I can I can reach that level as well. So, um, yeah, no, definitely. I don't, I don't, I haven't given up hope. I still think I've got a lot to give, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really um determined to prove that.